Hello everyone, this is Chakawa here, and today I'm going to be presenting to you my top 10 Daedric artifacts in Skyrim. This list was suggested to me by GupGup, so thanks for watching my videos, dude. Kicking off our list at number 10, I have the Mask of Clavicus Vile, darling. This is a heavy armor mask that you get after completing the quest A Daedric Best Friend. To initiate this quest, you must wander around the outskirts of Falkreath until you meet the talking dog Barbus, who sounds to me like an Italian gangster from Brooklyn. He will lead you to a cave where there is a statue of the Daedric Prince of Trickery and Wishes, Clavicus Vile. The mask is very useful because when wearing it, prices are 20% better, speech is increased by 10, and Magicka regenerates 5% faster. 9. The Mace of Molog Ball Molagbol is the Daedric Prince of Domination and Enslavement of Mortals. When you wander into Markarth, a Vigilant of Stendar will be outside a house asking people if they'd seen anyone go in or out, and when you agree to investigate the house with him, you initiate the quest, A House of Horrors. As you wander down the decaying ruins, you find the Shrine of Molagbol, who will give you a task. After completing said task, you'll receive the Mace. The mace does 31 points of damage to stamina and magicka, and if the target dies within 3 seconds, it will fill a soul gem. For number 8, I have Maroon's Razor. Our old friend of Oblivion, the old Daedric Prince of Destruction, Maroon's Dagon, has come back in Skyrim. This time, presenting us a long and difficult quest called Pieces of the Past. Boring! The required level to get this quest is 20, where a courier will give you a museum pamphlet. Make your way over to Dawnstar and you'll find a man named Sias Vesius, a man devoted to the mythic Dawn cult. He will initiate the quest to find the scattered pieces of Maroon's razor, a powerful dagger that has 1 in 2-8% chance of instantly killing an opponent during combat. Number 7, the Ring of Namira is an artifact that while wearing it, your stamina is increased by 50 points and feeding on corpses grants you increased health and health regeneration, you cannibal. You obtain it by completing the quest, The Taste of Death. You hear rumors around Markarth that the Hall of the Dead is closed, so you must go talk with Brother Verulus, a priest of Arche. He asks the Dragonborn to investigate the catacombs, and you find a cultish setting going on. You must lure the priest to his death to praise Namira, the Daedric Prince of Darkness and Shadow, and in return, she will grant you the ring. Number 6, the Ogma Infinium. This is a reward that you get after completing the quest Discerning the Transmune, which can only be obtained by being a level 15 and returning the lexicon to the mage Septimus Sigmus, who can be found in his outpost north of the College of Winterholt. After collecting blood from each of the elven races, Altmer, Dunmer, Bosmer, Orzimer, and Fulmer, the mixture will resemble the blood of the Dwemer and will open a Dwemer puzzle box that Septimus has been slaving over. Inside this box is the book The Ogma Infinium, which Hermaeus Mora, the Daedric Prince of Knowledge, will grant on the Dragonborn. Reading the Ogma Infinium will grant the Dragonborn a choice between improving the skills of Might, Magic, and Shadow. For number 5, I have Sanguine's Rose. Sanguine is a Daedric Prince of Debauchery and disguises himself as a fun-loving man named Sam Govine. After you reach level 14, he will appear in random taverns around Skyrim, challenging the Dragonborn to a drinking contest. Accepting his challenge will start the quest A Night to Remember. You wake up in the Temple of Devella in Markarth and learn that you and Sam went on a drunken mischief run throughout Skyrim the night before. Oh my god! After tracking down Sam and fixing the problems you two caused along the way, he rewards you with Sanguine's Rose, a powerful staff with the ability to summon Daedra to fight for you for a short while. For number 4, I have the Ebony Mail. After reaching a level 30 in Skyrim, you may find a book called Boethia's Proving, and reading it will initiate the quest Boethia's Calling. Boethia is the Daedric Prince of Deceit, Conspiracy, and Treachery. During this quest, you must sacrifice a follower to the prince in order to gain the reward. My recommendation would be people who you beat in brawls, you know, someone who isn't important to the main plot. The Ebony Mail, however, is a very powerful piece of armor. Not only is it enchanted with Muffle, 
but any enemies who get too close will be infected with a poison that takes the form of a black smoke that envelops the dragonborn during combat. Number 3, Dawnbreaker. Once the Dragonborn has reached level 14, a radiant gem called Meradia's Beacon can be looted from random chests around Skyrim. After obtaining the gem, you will hear the voice of the Daedric Prince of Life and Infinite Energy, Meridia. This will start the quest, The Break of Dawn. Meridia will instruct you to find her shrine west of Solitude and purge the undead beings from her temple. After returning light to her temple, the Dragonborn is lifted into the heavens to meet Meridia herself and will be gifted with Dawnbreaker. Dawnbreaker is a unique sword that burns the target for 10 to 15 points of damage and when attacking undead has a chance to create a fiery explosion reducing them to ash. For number 2 I have the Wabjack! When enjoying the sights and sounds of the City of Solitude, you may happen upon a madman named Dervenin. He tells you that his master is away on vacation and asks you to help him get him back. To do this, you must gain access to the Pelagius Wing of the Blue Palace. And who is waiting there? Only our cheese-eating, narwhal-riding best friend forever, Shea Gorath, the Prince of Madness! He tells you that you must cleanse the Emperor Pelagius' mind of his demons, and after doing his bidding, he grants you with the Wabajack, a staff that will either hinder or help your enemies. For example, it could turn that Imperial soldier you're fighting into a mud crab or a saber cat. It is probably one of the most fun, useful, useless weapons ever. For number one, I have chosen Spellbreaker, the quest reward for the only cure. You must be a level 12 in order to get this quest from a Khajiit named Kesh at the Shrine of Periite, the Prince of Pestilence. He will give you a list of items that you must collect, which include a silver ingot, a death bell, vampire dust, and a flawless ruby. Giving these to Kesh will allow him to create some drugs, I mean some fumes for you. Some fumes that you must inhale to speak to Periite. Periite will instruct you to kill his current overseer or Kendor, and afterwards will award you with Spellbreaker, a shield that when blocking creates a ward that will protect you from spells leading up to 50 damage. It is very effective against mages and even dragons, as Spellbreaker can reduce the damage of their shouts and breath, and I feel that it is the most useful Daedric artifact. I hope you enjoyed my list and found it helpful. I'm always trying to come out with more top 10s and tribute videos. Remember to like and subscribe. Bye! Thank you.